Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Wright family and on behalf of Joy, I'd like to welcome you to the Celebration of Life service for Bill Wright Jr. Eight years ago, I moved to California for the first time, for the only time, and, uh, <laughs> and I was very new to the church, and I remember uh, my assistant called and said, there's this man who wants to have lunch with you. And I'm thinking to myself, what did I do wrong? I've only been here 90 days. What could I have done wrong? She said, no, no, I don't think you did anything wrong. I said, I said well, what, what was the message? He said, uh, I want to meet our new pastor and get to know him. I said, what else? There's got to be something else. No, I think he just wants to get to know you. And so I'm at the lunch and here comes Bill Wright and uh, we're sitting down and we're talking and I remember thinking to myself this man's very approachable very easy to talk to and he really carries the conversation I don't even have to think of much to say he's got a lot to say <laughs> in the back of my mind I'm thinking the whole time okay wh when's it gonna come when's it gonna come you know the 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 the, the negative stuff and it never came uh, we just had a great conversation. I'm going to come back in a few minutes and share more. But through that, I remember that Bill was all about relationship and connection. And I think as I look out now and see a full sanctuary full of people celebrating Bill, uh, you are all testimony to that as well, that Bill was a man of relationship and connection. And one of the people that he connected me with was Mike Evans, who I'm very grateful that Bill connected me with him because now Mike Evans is also a friend and he's going to open us in prayer this morning. Thank you. Would you uh, go with me before the Lord? Father God, as we're here this morning to remember our friend Bill Wright Jr., we're thankful for our opportunity to cross paths with this fun unique man. His enthusiasm and his, his sense of adventure was infectious. His love for his family, Father, was obvious. And even though we know because of his deep faith in Jesus Christ as his Lord, he's with you in a place where there's no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. I pray, God, that you be with us, with his family, with each of us, because our loss is great, and uh, there was something about him that we remember perhaps with fondness, maybe humor. Uh, he was one of those individuals, God, that seemed to see humor in every situation. God, as we leave this place today, may we remember those things about Bill Wright Jr. that encouraged us, made us glad that our path crossed. And pray, Lord, that your comfort and your blessing would be upon each of us as we leave this place today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> um, Bill was a good friend, and he was a buddy. And Joy asked me to share a few things that I remember about him. Um, I can't remember if I met Bill at, at one of his dad's Christmas parties or at church. Uh, but he was, he was, we were immediately connected. And that's the kind of guy Bill was. He was, he was uh, part of my board of directors at Wholeness Ministries. He was always supportive, always enthusiastic. And when we'd have these meetings, he always had such a positive attitude about whatever we're going to do, and it was infectious. Um, and I never heard him tell me you can't do something. Sometimes I'd come up with some idea of, of something I wanted to do and he was always in, encouraging about that. He was a dreamer. And uh, he had some ideas that were great ideas and he had some ideas that were crazy as hell. <laughs> I mean, that was Bill, you know? <laughs> one of the things I loved about him. Uh, Bill was, uh, was one of those guys, I, I do a lot of traveling nationally and internationally, and I took him on several trips with me, both here in the U.S. and uh, overseas. And I remember I took him on one trip to Northern Ireland to Belfast. He loved Ireland. 
he felt like he was home, you know? He was like a kid at home. And while we were there, um, you know, we prayed for people and we did a lot of teaching in different churches, Catholic churches, Anglican churches, Presbyterian churches, no matter where we were, Bill just fit in. He was the kind of guy that everywhere he went, he was outgoing, he was fun, he was enthusiastic, and it was infectious, wasn't it? When you were around him, that's the kind of guy. He was also a generous guy. I remember when we were doing our nine DVD videotape series, or video series, I wasn't sure we had the money to do it. And Bill said, hey, I'll take care of that for you. Don't worry about it. Again, that was, that was who he was. He was generous. He was, uh, there was one year when my wife, Jane, and I needed another car. So we were looking around for a used car. And Bill had this 94 Camry that he loved. Um, and he said, I'll sell you this car on one condition, that when you get ready to sell it, you sell it back to me. So he did. Eventually, we got to the point of, okay, we're done with this car. Now, he would always ask me, are you taking care of my car? <laughs> How's my car, you know? He eventually bought it back, and I think he gave it to one of his kids, or one of his kids, right? Okay. Um, also... You know, I, I write books, and I never wanted to write books much, but I wrote one. And after I wrote this first book, he told me, you're going to write another book. In fact, he said, in fact, you have many books in you you're going to write. And he was always asking me, when are you going to write your next book? He kept saying, Michael, you have to tell the stories of all the healings and all the things you've seen over these 24 years. So I'd start writing these things down, and he'd ask me, how are you doing? How are you coming on your book? And when I finished it and gave him the first unedited draft, he read the first few pages, and he said, Michael, this is great. This is so encouraging. And I mean, that was, that was just Bill. He was outgoing, encouraging, enthusiastic. He was a dear friend, and he was a close buddy. That's my friend, Bill Wright, Jr.
I'm Bill Baker, Bill's friend, and uh, I've asked to bring Bill's uh, life uh, to uh, all of you in the eulogy, remembering him. It's easier to talk to Bill than it is about Bill, but we know his spirit's here with us in everything that we share today. And um, besides, if uh, Bill were speaking today, he'd have the last word. <laughs> well, I get to today, Bill. That's very uncommon. Um, William Thomas Wright Jr. was born on Earth Day, a day to remember April 22nd, 1948, to William and Deany Wright. He passed away peacefully with family by his side on December 8th, 2018, at the age of 70, after a five-month battle with glioblastoma multiforme. He is survived by his wife, Joy L. Wright, and her children, Clinton Mount, daughter Andrea Singletary Perez, and husband Brian and children Gavin, Noah, and Colton, daughter Jessica Singletary, children born to Becky Wright, our son Aaron David Wright, and wife Karen and their children Aaron Jr., Liam, and Elizabeth, daughter Kanan Wright, and children Maya Sanchez, and Austin Lance Langdon, and daughter Anna Louise Wright Malone, and husband Steve, and children Harrison and Finley. He is also survived by sisters Gina and Cassie Wright, cousin Dick Williams, and numerous nieces and nephews. There are those here today who have shared many different times in Bill's life, some from high school, including friends, fellow athletes, and those from the service club, the Ascots, some from college, others from Church of the Living Word, those blessed by his ministry as a pastor in Bakersfield, and others from his work in laboratory science or when he was employed at Bill Wright Toyota. You will all know Bill somewhat differently. Let me take a moment to share with you the story of Bill's remarkable and blessed life. Bill liked to joke that he was like an exiled Jew. He couldn't get back to the place he really felt most at home in San Diego. Moving from place to place, as his dad, Bill Wright Sr., explored a variety of business ventures, Bill lived first in San Diego, then in San Francisco, where he enjoyed all of his boyhood adventures, and there were many. Uh, most, if you know the family, most of them were involved uh, with his mischievous little brother, Fred. On their travels, they passed through Bakersfield. The family moved to Bakersfield in the summer of his eighth grade year, 1962. Fred thought that their father had moved them to a truck stop. Uh, Bill confirmed that this was the truth. Since with 55 degrees in San Francisco and 110 in Bakersfield, Fred thought his father had brought them here to die. Bill reassured Fred that this was not really the case. And Bill was always reassuring Fred about something. The big brother. Bill Wright Sr. opened Bill Wright Toyota in December of 1969. In junior high at Compton, where I first met Bill, he excelled at track, participating in the junior hijinks, and was outstanding in football, basketball, baseball, playing golf, and tennis. When his dad refused to sign the form for him to play football in high school, he settled on tennis. His dad thought he was too small and he would uh, get seriously injured. He began by hitting balls against the wall at Colonel Nichols School and Seaman Park while reading a book about tennis he had checked out from the library. That's not the traditional way to learn the game of tennis. But that was Bill, very, very talented. Bill started high school at East High School and uh, as a sophomore, Rob Slaybaugh convinced Bill to transfer to Foothill to play for his Richard Quering, the new tennis coach who needed players. Bill went on to be one of the top players at Foothill High School and Bakersfield College. Team with Steve Newborough, who's here today, in high school, he was CIF Valley runner-up in doubles in 1967. And the tandem also beat Bill Davidson and his partner, the number one doubles player and team in the United States. Well, at BC, he was on a Metropolitan Conference championship team and received a scholarship to play tennis at San Diego State. Because of the demands of his major in microbiology and conflict between practice and classes, Bill's current, uh, tennis career ended. He completed his degree in microbiology, then a master's in medical technology, and finally the equivalent of a doctorate in laboratory science, become certified as a clinical laboratory scientist. He worked in many different hospitals and outpatient laboratory settings throughout his career and became the trusted go-to person in the Bakersfield medical community for new laboratory setup and problem solving. 
We worked together as Bill managed my office laboratory, including a high-tech coagulation laboratory from 2000 to 2010. Bill became a Christian while in young life at Foothill. On transfer to San Diego State, he met Rod Fink. Together they discovered an exciting new ministry taking place at the La Jolla Lutheran Church. This involved a beautiful and exciting form of worship and ministry welcoming all ages and all walks of life. When I moved to San Diego with my wife, Sharon, who Bill set me up with, but that's another story. That was our first date. We reconnected and also became involved in the church with Bill and Becky and Rod and Charlene. Before long, we were spending virtually every night and weekend together, reading the word, going to services at Kaniah Chapel in Chula Vista and praying. We decided we might as well live together. So we all moved into a five bedroom house in Claremont. Now, yep, that was communal living, but it was the 70s, I mean, really. That was the thing then, it was okay. Well, that's another story as well. You have to ask uh, Rod and Charlene Sharon about that and Becky. We became actively involved in the ministry and thus began Bill's work as a pastor. Subsequent years saw Bill involved in Bill Wright Toyota, moving to Lancaster, then to Seattle, and then returning to Bakersfield. He studied for 18 months at Stanford to become a PA, but became seriously ill just at the end of his courses and was unable to complete his degree. He returned to laboratory medicine. He then met and married Joy and became involved in New Life Church. He subsequently returned to God's calling as a pastor, ministering to the needs of others. He loved Joy with all of his heart and was never shy about telling me of the beauty of her voice and the beauty of their ministry together at Life Point Church and in Christian counseling. Bill loved all of his children and grandchildren and always cherished the time he had with them. Bill was a wonderfully gifted and brilliant man who could hold court with anyone. His creative mind, flood of ideas and stories kept many captivated. Many of you remembering saying, remember him, him saying, that's not your best look. He told me that. <laughs> or sounds like you're having a ba bad day. He told me that too. <laughs> or other insightful and truthful words. Bill is remembered from high school by Michelle Greenberg, who wrote, wrote succinctly, he loved his mother. There was nothing he would not do for her. And he loved his sister, Sandy. He protected her. He was generous with his time. He never turned down a chance to play tennis. Dr. Dean Haddock remembers Bill as a brilliant man and devoted Christian who loved the Lord and was a true evangelical, never hesitating to tell you about the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to share Bill's life and your blessings through him to all of us. As my siblings are coming up to, we're going to do a song called Balm and Gilead. We're singing this song because Bill often remembered Dr. Baker, Bill Baker, starting that song. I don't know if you know, but Dr. Baker has a beautiful tenor voice. He doesn't want to talk about that much, but <laughs> Bill just, it must have really been something special because he t spoke of it often and he loved this song and this song my mother used to sing as a solo in church often I remember her doing this song so some of you may have never heard this song it's not performed very much but we're going to do our best I'm singing Balm in Gilead Tom could you give us our, our chord our F chord Yeah. 
to heal a sin sick soul. Some cannot preach like Peter if you cannot pray like Paul. You can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick I forgot to mention that also the reason my quartet of siblings are singing is because Bill would often say, you need to put it, this down in recording, right? And so I thought he would often say, you need to sing together. And so we're singing together for him today. Amen. 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 So Pastor Tom Nackey will come and give us some words on remembering Bill. Bill uh, became a great friend. Doing ministry with Bill uh, was a great joy. And uh, I remember, oh, it was about three or four years ago, we were sitting down, and uh, Bill loved to take me to lunch. And I love to go to lunch. So, I <laughs> <laughs> so anytime, I, anytime I even saw his name, he was one of those ones, oh, got to answer this one. <laughs> Not that I don't answer all the calls that come in fairly and equally, you know. And so we're sitting down, and he, he looks at me, he goes, you know, Tom, you've got the face for radio. And I didn't get the joke then, you know. I think I heard voice, but he said, I know he said, he said face. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, ah, what, a, what if Life Point did a radio show? And I'm like, we can't do that. And the one thing I loved about Bill is whenever you said you can't do something, he gets really excited. <laughs> the moment you say, I can't, I mean, Bill just goes into full vision mode. Oh, you think you can't. And he's already five steps ahead of you as to how to get you there. And he's like, I'll tell you what, you just go and figure out the cost. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll put, put some ideas together. So I went out, I said, we got a quote, $58,000. I came in, I said, Bill, we, we don't, I don't have $58,000. You know, our church doesn't have $58,000. You know, it's, it, was, it was nice dreaming. So he goes, what if we got that down to 40,000? I said, ah, 40,000 is, but that's still too much. You know, he goes, what if we got it down to 30,000? I'm like, is this like God and Abraham here? You know, are you gonna get me you know, down to two people? What is it going on, you know? And I said, Bill, no, not for 30,000, no, 20,000. No, not for 20, the church needs a new van, 20,000, you know. I, he says, $10,000. I said, Bill, that's still too much. He said, 5,000. 90% off, more than that, the quote you got. I said, well, Bill, I mean, it's fun to say this over lunch, but I mean, you have to take theory into reality. And I always question Bill's theory and realities from time to time, you know? He lived up there in the stars, you know? <laughs> you know that scripture where it says, God calls things that are not as though they were? I apply that to Bill. Bill called things that were not as though they were. And he said, he said, all right, give me a week. He comes back and he says, you want to be on the radio? I can get it for $5,000. And I was just amazed. I was like, Bill, how do you do that? He goes, how does anything get done? You just do it. And, <laughs> and I remember, you know, we started meeting, not just as doing ministry together through LifePoint, but he became the radio producer for the radio show. And so we met often, and, 
And uh, it was, I can't tell you what a joy it was to meet with Bill, especially to have a different side of the ministry, not just the preaching and praying and counseling, which I love, but having this side, this side that was in dreamland. You know, I'm thinking, man, I, I don't belong up there with the David Jeremiah's and the, you know, and, and Bill would always say, yes, Tom, you do, you do. Not you do, but what God is going to do through you belongs up there. And that's what I remember about Bill, is whenever I said, oh, Bill, we can't do that. Oh, Bill, we can't get this guest. Oh, Bill, we can't. Whenever I'd say we can't, that's when Bill's faith just began to shoot through the roof. And uh, I'm proud to have known him, proud to call him my friend. Uh, can't wait to see him again. And I know that uh, between this day and that, uh, there's just going to be a lot of moments where I remember an amazing man called Bill Wright Jr., where things in many of our lives would never have happened if it wasn't for his faith to see them happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this point, we're going to watch a, a video production of some slides remembering Bill Wright Jr. 